Hello, today we're going to take a look at the ADCC uh, Chinese engine bike engine kit you can buy uh, from eBay. Uh, I bought the engine for about a little over $60 and uh, after shipping a little over $20 it came out to be $92 give or take a little bit um, and depending on when you buy it prices probably will go up just due to inflation rates um, but uh, to start off I'm going to start off with the negative parts of this bike and then I'll go to the uh, positive parts. Overall, just before I get into the negatives here, I did find this bike very enjoyable to build and very rewarding in the end. And I, I do enjoy riding this bike around. Um, so to start off with the negatives, the smallest one first was uh, because of how many of these produce, uh, quality control is not that good as well as you know the metal isn't the best either. And when they're making this fuel tank, they uh, they painted the male receiving end of the nut a little bit too far down and when I tried to screw the nut on um, it didn't want to go any farther past the paint so you could use some acetone sandblaster paint thinner I don't know paint thinner but uh, acetone or sandblaster so anything you can do to really kind of strip away the paint just so the nut can go up farther and tighten um, against the frame not a huge deal pretty small to me took a little bit extra time to fix uh, the only other thing may this is uh, you know, not a huge deal to me at least, uh, just because this isn't a, a beauty contest over here. Uh, the, whoever welded this tank, um, the receiving nub for the the uh, gas shutoff valve, uh, the weld right in here was leaking somewhere. I don't know where exactly, but I did caulk the whole thing, and it it is holding now. So it did fix the problem. Just that it was leaky a little bit. Not a huge deal. I just had to drain out the gas and then fix that. Um, other thing I did notice, and you kind of see it right here, is a little bit of debris that has made its way from the fuel tank um, into the fuel line. Now, this does have a fuel filter, which will prevent any major debris from getting in, which is probably a good thing. I'm, I'm glad they did add that in the kit. Um, but uh, and you can kind of see, and this is partially due to my bike, and I'll get into this later. It goes into the chain then next with this, but because the frame is small and the frame isn't meant for this at by all means, um, this tube is a little close, so I had to put the, the fuel filter over here, um, but I, I rode this today for about three hours, and uh, this, this tube did not melt or anything, so I wouldn't worry about that. Um, it does perform pretty good. Uh, the only other thing, and this, those were the, so the caulk, the nut right there, and the only major thing I had, and this is pretty major, I mean not horrible, you know, you can fix it relatively easy, it's just with my bike more so. Um, this chain had to be replaced. I had to go to Tractor Supply and get a, a number 41 chain is what it's called. Uh, I think it's like 25 bucks after tax. So, you know, it, it's a more expensive chain, but it's about 50% thicker than the old one, and it's a lot stronger than the old that, that came with the original kit. Now, you have to remember, the kit's only $60. A lot of that goes towards carburetor, you know, the engine, muffler, and tank, and some does go towards the chain, you know, what they spend on it. But, you know, you got to imagine that chain is not the best quality. You know, it just comes with the price. Not a huge deal. Now, if you have a cruiser and you're willing to work on it, I think the chain will be okay. Um, I do know it's going to stretch out about half an inch, roughly, give or take a little bit. That's just due uh, to the bearings wearing in a little bit more on that roller chain than this one. For some reason, this one didn't stretch out nearly as much, which I really appreciate. Didn't have to tighten it. Uh, this is a, num a number 41 chain from uh, Tractor Supply. Uh, make sure when you do put the clip back on, make sure you put it in this direction because it's going to come around into the engine and you, you just want it so it won't accidentally hit a gear or something and pop off. Um, so with this frame, the problem was the tolerances were really tight and because this engine, first off, the engine wouldn't fit properly, you know, the frame was just not suited um, for it. So what I had to do, because I had, I believe, some adjuster here for the gears over here, I'd put above that, which means I'd put that spacer, then this plate, and then tied to this. And then I just, I had one, that one plate over here. But what happened was, this plate right here um, was rubbing against this chain. So I had to grind that back, and, uh, and that seemed to work out pretty well. Um, now because it's so close, you know, the tolerances right here are real close too, and so I put washers in right there to fix that. What happened was, um, the main thing for my bike, now this shouldn't be for your bike, um, but with this bike, 
because the tops are so tight, that's the only way that I can get the gear to fit properly. And so when I the gear when this chain roller chain is lined up, I have to move this offset this um, tensioner guide just a little bit to get it on par with this gear. Um, and what was happening was with the cheaper gear, I didn't and this is partially my fault too. I didn't tighten this down enough, so when I started it, this chain tensions up when you origin when you start pedaling. Um, and then this will usually, if you don't tighten it, will push in if it's offset in either direction. Which means it straightened out with this chain, which usually is a good thing, but for my bike, it offset it from the gear, which popped the chain off. And eventually, when my friend rode it, the one, my, uh, about three days after I built this thing, um, it snapped. And I had to get the new chain from Track Display. Not a big deal. You know, it was a $25 chain, but it is well worth it. I rode it today for about three hours, and I have no really no slack. I mean, this chain is a little bit tighter than your normal standards um, but it also is rated for probably better performance than that um, those were the only real negatives I had the positives on this bike are far exceeding I feel than the negatives um, the, only, oh, the only thing not negative just my personal preference I got a nice seat you know a cruiser seat just because the vibrations on this um, bike because it's a mountain bike I got these big nubs here and the engine is real tight, and you know, it just if I get a lot of vibrations off this bike because the bike itself is not meant for this, and I got these tires, so I get a lot of vibrations on it. So I just changed the seat out, made a huge difference. Um, so the positives on the bike, the engine is real rugged. It's kind of like you know, to make it, I guess, in terms of. How it is built in the general sense is like an AK-47, at least in my opinion. Um, the tolerance is a little bit looser, um, a little more rugged, but it should last you a while. As long as you treat it, you know, with respect, you don't abuse it too much, it uh, should turn out just fine. Carburetor was nice and clean when I got it. I was happy with that. Um, I checked the cylinder. I took the head off, and that was clean too. Um, you know, good bike overall. The engine, the carburetor worked great. Um... The muffler is relatively quiet, which I, I prefer because I don't want to draw too much attention to myself. Not that I'm doing anything illegal here. It's just that, you know, I I was dry. It's 50 degrees out in Ohio today. Real nice weather. And, uh, you know, I, I was a lot of people outside. And a lot of people were just looking at it like, what the heck is that thing? You know, it's, that's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. It's a bike with an engine on it. You usually don't see that, at least not in Ohio. Um, so, you know, a quieter engine. You, you don't get as many people looking at you and stuff like that does have a little bit of smoke come out of it just because it is two stroke that's by its nature um, not a big deal besides that um, another positive is the fuel tank now this fuel tank is only 0.39 gallon capacity if you convert that this is a 1.5 liter tank convert it convert it to gallons this is maximum about uh, 0.4 gallons is what you get I rode for three hours at about 20 miles an hour which means at a full tank I got about 60 miles per tank you know, so that I think that's great because considering I bought premium fuel ninety three at three dollars today, um, and then I had to mix it with oil, so it probably came out to like six dollars for the one gallon, and you put two fuel in that that would be about two tanks of fuel. So just let's just make it simple. Let's say it's six dollars. Let's say you're in California somewhere, the gas is pricey six to seven dollars per per gallon, and you get two tanks out of it. So you're getting two tank, you know, seven bucks. You're getting sixty miles. That's almost was that's, that's that's pretty darn close to being. I mean, that that's real efficient. I can't believe how good it is on efficiency. It just sips gas. Um, I have taken this slightly off road, so it is you know it is bumpy. There's no suspension on this bike, just the rubber air, the air and the the tires. I uh, I did make it looser. Um, you know, like the uh, tires a little bit. I guess deflated just to kind of soak up the bumps because when you're traveling 25 miles an hour on a mountain bike with no suspension and you hit a pothole in Toledo it kind of hurts <laughs> so no I'm not dissing Toledo but um it you do feel it so you got to watch out for major bumps um but the engine and everything if you tighten it down it, it sustains it very well it does a good job it keeps on trucking I love it I just love it um as you know fuel economy is great um, one side note on this, uh, this engine actually is, 
uh, 66cc is not a 80cc. In China, they consider cylinders to be below, I believe, the piston, so it makes the cylinder dimensions a little bit bigger when they market it. It's a marketing tactic, I believe, but it's main, It's actually a 60cc uh, engine. Now, that doesn't mean it's it's less power. I mean, it is a little bit less powerful than an 80cc. I don't know if you can buy an 80cc for the bike, but um, I do find it to be sufficient um, on power-wise. I, I actually like the power range on this. It's a little bit torquey. You can feel, you know, you, you get pushed back in your seat just a little bit when you accelerate. Um, it does top out around 25 to 30 miles an hour, depending on the grade, uh, type of tires you have, how heavy you are, and a couple other factors. Um, because it's a mountain bike, I'd offset the clutch a little bit. Not a big deal when I'm cruising. When you're cruising, this clutch is up, so I still have both use of both brakes until I bring in um, disengage the clutch, which is not a big deal because I'm almost stopped at that point. Um, choke works real well, or the uh, the kill switch works well. Uh, the kit says black to black, blue to blue. I just put also the red and white into that one, and the black to black in this one, and uh, it seemed to work out pretty well. Uh, I did have to super glue this throttle cable, uh, and it worked. I didn't have to drill my my uh, handlebars or handlebars at all, so that that worked out great. Um, if you have a mountain bike, you're probably gonna have to zip tie all the cables. I mean, it's a ton of cables. But uh, besides that, um, not a huge deal. You know, you just gotta work around it. Build time's gonna be about, you know, if you know what you're doing, six to seven hours. It took me about nine hours. Um, it, it could take less than six even if you really know what you're doing, but. Um, the main thing that saved you time is to switch that chain out automatic right away. Just switch it out, spend the extra $25, go to track supply, buy the number 41 chain. I think it's well worth it. And then, uh, <clears throat> besides that, just kind of, you know, I, I would suggest this kit did come with this book, which I did find helpful. Um, but I'm a visual learner like most people, and YouTube videos actually seem to work better for me. Just because I can see how it's actually done. You know, you can explain it, but then when you actually see it, it's a whole nother field. Um, this engine is a great kit bike. Um, if you want to, if you're a motor or engine novice or an expert, uh, or you just like to work on engines, this is a great kit to get, especially for you know maybe a 15, 16 year old. You know they want to start getting into uh, maybe you know starting looking at cars um, or bikes, motorcycles. This is a very fundament, like very basic, fundamental, simple design. It shows you how, you know, fuel turns into power, which is driven to the back wheel. There's no transmission on this, but the fundamentals are: you got the carburetor, which mixes your fuel, you know, the combustion, your actual fuel, and instead of a transmission, you just get a chain. Um, which well, actually, the transmission would be up here, but we don't have that. It's a direct drive, kind of like a boat. Um, so I think you know, if you're mechanically inclined or you want to be and you want to spend the time on learning it, I think it's a great, great kit, especially versus sitting on the couch eating potato chips, watching TV. This is a great. I think this is a good time well spent um, if you have the time to spend on it. Now let's say you don't have 10 hours uh, to spend on it. I know you can go on Craigslist. People do sell these pre-made. You know they they mark it up about 200, 250 dollars for their labor, which is fair, I find. Um, and, you know, the, the quality is relatively good. They know what they're doing more so if they've built a couple of them, so they should, you know, get it right the first time. Um, and you can ask them if they change the chain out or if, you know, it, it's properly tensioned or pre-tensioned. Um, if you're not a not, let's say you don't want to work on the engine, you know, you don't feel like paying somebody. I'd go with an electric bike, honestly, if you, if you don't want to. If you're not into this type of stuff, I know you can pick up electric bike. You know, maybe a little bit more. I think it's double this price, or even even more than that, actually. Um, but uh, if you're, uh, you know, if you're not mechanically inclined, um, I'd say go with the uh, electric. And I was saying that double the price. I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought there. But uh, um, you know, electric only gets probably about 20 to 30 miles, depending on how powerful your engine is or motor is on the electrical bike, as well as the uh, the battery capacity. Um, and it probably takes probably a few hours to charge them too. So, you know, if you want to spend the time on a bike, on building it, and you don't mind working on it, once it's built, I think it's superior to the electrical bikes, at least on the market right now. Um, because honestly, you can just fill the tank up for a couple bucks, 
and just run this forever. And you can, I rode, you know, three hours today, got 60 miles on it, and uh, just fill up the tank, keep going if you really want to go again. But uh, electric bike probably won't be the uh, your best option if you plan on riding a lot and or joy riding. I this is a great joy riding bike uh, to sightsee around the neighborhood. I was going through uh, an old neighborhood I lived in and uh, was able to uh, just check out the whole neighborhood and and see you know just remember back from my childhood. Um, so besides that, if you uh, have any comments or questions on the bike, feel free to ask me. I know there's a lot of YouTube videos out there that actually show you how to do it, so I prefer you, that you go look at them. Not that I don't mind commenting on it, um, but there's a lot of other videos out there that are more antiquated to showing you how to actually build this bike. Um, besides that, I think I covered everything. Uh, to sum it up, good bike overall, great joy rider, you know, even a commuter. Uh, get a cruiser would be preferred if you have one. Uh, upgrade the chain. You can buy the cheaper kit. It doesn't really matter to me. You know, they they change a few things to justify the price. I don't think it's really worth it. Uh, the negatives are the chain. Um, it is a little bit cheaper. I'd be careful of you know stripping screws and and nuts of that sort. Um, but overall, great bike. You know, it, it keeps you busy. It lets you have a lot of fun. Just drive around, putzing around town. You know, if you have nothing to do, it's a great thing to do in warmer weather. Um, so overall, like I said, um, you know, I'd give it about four stars out of five. Um, so, you know, it's got a good rating in my book. So thank you guys for watching and take care.